Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics. A little bit of a speculative one, this one. So in this video, what I'd like to do is to discuss the concerns from some conservatives about the potential for flexible working for lots of office-based workers, potentially others as well, who have demonstrated just how much more efficiently some jobs can be done. First, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, the ability to request that your boss considers flexible working options where it's feasible to do so has been a bit of a right for some time. But all too often, this was seen as benefiting only the worker, never the company, and so such requests were usually turned down as being not practical. Now, my take on this is that many people in positions of management, from my own experience, and I'm sure all of us have had similar experiences, are that many of them, not all, Many of them lack the imagination to really look at better ways of doing things. For every good manager, there are of course many, uh, there are usually more lazy, largely unintelligent ones. They essentially maintain the status quo, even at the cost of competitiveness for their business. Sometimes they actually cost competitiveness for their business actively. As I say, I'm sure we've all seen it in our working lives, but the lockdown forced them to face up to another way of doing things. The status quo could not be maintained. Um, you know, you don't need to send people halfway across the country to have a meeting because you can use one of the plethora of video conferencing apps. This saves the company money in both wages and travel expenses and sometimes hospitality if that meeting had to take place away from company property because you had nowhere that could accommodate all those people. Additionally, if an office-based worker is working at home, your company is saving money electricity bills are down. There's less demand on internet bandwidth for them as well. Um, you don't need to get in as much tea and biscuits. People have been turned on to the idea of digital tools now for booking and planning meetings. There have been a number of ways in which some working has not just been as good. You know, that itself would be, oh, this works just as well. No, it's actually been better, more efficient during the lockdown using tools and methods that have been known about for years, but now managers are actually going, oh, this thing exists. To which my response is in a situation like this is, how could you not know that? Do, do, you, do, do you not actually look for better ways of doing things? Is that not your job? But now, as I say, they're, they're discovering these things. They've been forced to move out of their comfort zone and use them. And you know what? They're better for many situations, not all, but for many situations, they're actually better than the way they were doing things before. So companies are now looking at this and going, ah, we can we can do these things differently. The things we've been doing now, we're going to retain some of these. And in fact, it's actually had some managers in some companies thinking, are there even more tools we could use? When we go back, are there other opportunities to improve the way we do things? And all of this means that you're going to have quite a lot of companies will be wanting to retain some of these practices as the lockdown is eased. In fact, I know some that are actively pursuing it. Um, my girlfriends, for example. And this isn't just about the worker who was turned down for flexible working last year and now the proof that it can be done. This is about senior managers seeing the benefits for themselves and actively asking their staff to consider how they might like to work in the long term. Like I say, my girlfriend's company have done this. They've said to them, oh, you know, they are, they, they're not saying to them, right, okay, when the lockdowns ease, we're all coming back, we're going to put these things in place. It's all like, ah, oh, has anyone got any thoughts as to how we might change things for the long term? Bit of half and half, maybe? Put simply, there's going to be a lot of people working from home for at least four days in the week. Maybe coming in once a week for physical meetings or just to get to know the staff. That's, you know, on a personal level or for whatever other reason. But, you know, there's a lot of companies looking at the situation and going, yeah, you can work at home. <laughs> it's working well. Um, that saves the business in utilities. Accommodation. Don't need as many rooms because you hot desk when you've only got, you know, if you've only got your staff in one day a week or, you know, the office based staff. There'll be other staff that'll have to be in all day. But, you know, the office based staff. That means you're down to 20% capacity. You don't need as many offices. Hot desk. Um, it saves, you don't need as many computers then as well. I mean, the savings are immense. You know, and from the employee's point of view, they save in petrol as well. It also means, do you know what else it means? It means you can recruit staff from further afield. 
because if they just have to come in once a day, they might be prepared to travel further. Opens up your talent pool. It absolutely benefits both at the same time. And I've thought it's been a madness for years that people just don't turn on to sort of more modern working practices. But now necessity has forced this way of thinking. Hurrah! Only some don't like it. Specifically, some Tories don't like it. Much of it has something to do with coffee in paper cups. Now, I don't understand coffee and I'm not really a fan of drinking out of paper cups either. So, you know, some people may have to help me out here. But as I understand it, this is the scenario. The lunchtime economy will be devastated, they complain. And sure, I get that. That makes sense. One driver of the economy is getting ordinary people to spend more money than they need to. Buying food and drinks during their lunch break is one such factor. Um, because a lot of people, let's be, I mean, I've known people that have basically just made themselves a jam sandwich in the morning. And that's what they take for their lunch. Some people will take soup, sure enough, things like that. But there's a lot of people who, for whatever reason, they can't be bothered or there's a nice sandwich shop around the corner, just use that. And then they then up spend a fortune on their lunch, as you can see it in budgets. You know, when people get into financial trouble, one thing you, you know, you do, you look at the budget and you'll see the amount they spend, which people don't even realise. Because really, it's just like it's a fiver here or there, but it adds up. You know, a fiver each time you do that is over 100 quid a month. And uh, so inevitably, that's going to take a hit. That industry is going to take a hit. Because working at home means you'll make your own lunch and cups of coffee. It'll be cheaper for the worker. So there are active calls within the party. And I'm not necessarily saying overwhelming, but there are active calls within the party to change the rules on flexible working. Because they've now seen, because it was all right before, because companies themselves were reluctant to go with it. But now the companies are saying, actually, this benefits us as well. So they're thinking, oh, no. Um, so they want now to take the power away from companies to, to offer flexible work. And I'm not quite sure how they plan to do that. But, you know, these conservatives are wanting the government to somehow force people back to the office. The hypocrisy of wanting to force workers, most of whom live hand to mouth, to spend their little money inefficiently, whilst at the same time enabling the wealthy to not spend what even they're supposed to on this country is truly deplorable. In a week of numerous deplorable acts, it has to be said. And it's also, as far as I can tell, fairly short-sighted as well, is it not? I mean, I'm not an economist. I'm not a business expert. Um... So let's make it clear. What I'm about to say here, of course, is speculative, but I think it's reasonable speculation. So imagine this from that worker's point of view. They're spending 100 quid plus a, a month on, on lunches. Now, of course, they would spend something on lunches if they're at home, but it'd be much less. Um, you know, so these sort of workers, I mean, they don't go squirreling their money offshore. I mean, that's, that's surely the case. I think that's fair to say. So any savings from eating out at lunch or even just buying from a canteen, would almost certainly still end up being spent, but on things that people actually want. It might be something for the home. It might be a nicer car or a phone, um, but it will still be something that involves spending and spending in this country and spending in a business that hopefully pays its rates unless they spend it all on Amazon, in which case make Amazon pay their fair share of taxes and then even that's fine. Um, but what I'm saying is it will still involve pumping money back into the economy. In which case, what these guys are actually calling for is for people to have just a straight up shittier life just so that they can get a costa whenever they feel like it. And yes, people will point out to the jobs lost in the hospitality industry, but the jobs would be taken up by the industries that will benefit from this because that money is still going to be spent and that industry is going to have therefore more custom more staff needed because like i said you know all that's likely to happen is that that workers i don't i don't think you'll suddenly see a boom in people saving you know savers are savers and spenders are spenders and i'm a spender and it just means it'll be spent on a different product the loss in one industry is the gain in another and on top of all this bear in mind what this means that means that workers actually end up with a better life because the worker that would doesn't think their home is suitable for working in well they can use the office but if they do then you know it's helping them maintain that work-life balance more easily cutting out the travel time if nothing else 
if nothing else, that is a huge benefit. And, you know, I mean, many other business owners are going to benefit from a more modern way of working as well. Productivity will go up because people will be happier. And what you actually find is that happier workers are more productive workers and they are more willing to go above and beyond in their jobs as well. And again, I can speak from experience, but I know this as well. So normal office worker gets there, starts the work at nine o'clock, clocks off at five o'clock, has their lunch in between. What's happening around the country is people are there with their computers there. They're not waiting for nine o'clock to log on. They're logging on a bit early. Well, I'm, I'm done now. I'm ready. Get on a bit early. My girlfriend one day last week had a bit of a task. Normally, of course, that would have waited till the next day, but she thought, no, I'll just do it in the evening. Um, and workers up and down the country are doing this. And the ones who don't want to do that, that's fine, but they wouldn't have done that in the office anyway. So it's gone from a point where virtually no one would be going in early or late to the office because you know travel may and, and childcare may have prevented you doing that anyway to, well, I'm at home anyway. There's this job once doing, I'll, I'll do it. And if they, you know, if they're being looked after and they feel that they've got a really good work-life balance, more inclined to do so. And yet this wants to be stopped. But there it is. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.